We are Brooke and Gary. One Life has been our home for the past two years and 6,000 nautical miles. After transiting the canal, we arrived to the Pearl Islands off the Pacific coast of Panama. We've just got our toes wet in the Pacific Ocean for the first time, and now we are ready to get headed in a new direction. We're sitting here in Ensenada Grande, which is in the archipelago Isla Perlas, which are the Pearl Islands, and they're about 25 miles southeast of Panama City. We came down here after we crossed the canal and reprovisioned in Panama City just to relax and take it easy for a while. We had a pretty hectic last few months with Bocas del Toro, visitors, taking on crew, and then the canal crossing. So it's been really nice just to slow down a little bit, go for walks on the beach. We did a little bit of snorkeling, but there's an upwelling that happens here in March in Las Perlas. So the water's been pretty cold and pretty dirty, but we still got in a few snorkels. And we went fishing from the dinghy one day, and we've kind of just been bouncing our way down through these islands, through these anchorages, and we're at the southern tip now. And yeah, it's been really nice just to relax and just have the two of us on the boat and get back to a, a quiet cruising life. But now that we've gone through the canal, the question is, where do we go from here? So there's basically two options. One is to head west to cross the Pacific and go to the South Pacific Islands. And the other option is to head north up towards Mexico. And with COVID closures still kind of taking hold of the South Pacific and islands that are just starting to open, we've decided we're gonna hold off on that for another year. And instead, we're gonna head north and check out Costa Rica and then head up to the Sea of Cortez in Mexico for the summer season. There's hurricane season here in the Pacific, just like there is in the Caribbean. And it's the same months as it is in the Caribbean. So it starts officially in May, but more like in June and ends in November. So that means that we need to be up in the Sea of Cortez to be far enough north away from the hurricane zone by about mid-June. It is mid-March now, and that's about 3,000 miles from here. So we've got a lot of sailing to do in the next few months. But from here, we're gonna sail to Coiba National Park in Panama still. And that's about 200 miles away. So we just spent all day today getting the boat ready, we're gonna to leave tonight around two in the morning and hopefully arrive there in about a day and a half in daylight. Yeah, that's our, our rough plans for the next few months. We're excited to be here in the Pacific and see new stuff. Uh, the wildlife has been crazy here already. There's like birds everywhere. We've seen, I think more birds than anywhere we've been already. And there's different fish in the waters well, we don't want you to not see Las Perlas, even though we've hardly been filming this week. So I think we'll just cue an epic drone and nature roll. Go.
The Lost Perlas are a group of over 200 islands, many tiny and most uninhabited. Our week in the Pearl Islands was exactly what we needed to decompress and refresh ourselves. We saw more birds than people and had the beaches all to ourselves. Every place has its own bit of magic, and the best way for us to capture and share this area with you is no doubt these aerial views. I'm getting our fishing gear ready for this next passage and I thought I would tell you guys a little bit about how we fish. So we have two of these enormous 50 wide Tiagra reels and we use these when we're going after the big mahi or the big tuna. And we have two rods with bent butts that we put these on. This allows the rod to be at an angle when it's sitting in the rod holder and I'm going to mount these reels onto our rods and then I think maybe tomorrow when we're sailing, I'll give you the rest of the spiel on how we fish. We take fishing very seriously on One Life because we love to eat fresh fish and it allows us to keep our freezer full. Since we were leaving at night, Gary put our rods in the holders so they would be ready for fishing at first light the following morning. Well, it is two in the morning and we just woke up and it's time to pull anchor and get on our way for our passage. Don't really enjoy waking up this early, but once we get going, I think we'll both feel a lot better. Here we go. and we are officially underway. It's about 2.30 a.m. You know, we decided to leave at 2 a.m. for a couple reasons. First, it's about 195 nautical miles to where we're headed. And if we average between five to six knots between that and the current that will be in our favor, we'll hopefully arrive um, in about 36 hours. So that'll put us there about 8 a.m and we'll have plenty of daylight to get in and get anchored. Good morning. It just woke up for my beautiful sunrise and my first full watch on the Pacific. So right now we're doing between five and six knots and we have about 13 knots from behind and the sea state is really beautiful right now. And Gary put the lines, the fishing lines out right before he went down to go to bed. So I'm just gonna patiently wait for a bite.
morning I'm just sitting here thinking how crazy it is that we are sailing on the Pacific Ocean. We spent two years in the Caribbean and to be honest we got pretty comfortable over there. We met some really amazing people. We traveled with the best buddy boats and now we're over here and we just seem so much further away from home and I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. I'm definitely excited for what's to come but I'm a little anxious as well. Some of our best friends now live all over the world <laughs> which is really cool. But I don't know when we'll make it back there and uh, yeah it's bittersweet for sure. Wow. So we were sailing along, sitting in the cockpit, doing about seven knots, and then all of a sudden we both just heard and felt the loudest thud ever. Yeah, it was really crazy and very scary. I felt like the boat like shake a bit. So it actually hit twice and we both jumped up and I looked back behind the boat and there was like maybe like a three foot diameter tree, maybe like 20 to 30 feet long behind the boat. So we went right into, like right over the top of her, right into a tree. But the rudder's still attached and we've been checking the bilges to make sure that there's no water coming in anywhere. And I think we got away with it, but it was scary. What do you think? Oh man, I hope everything's okay. I like totally just didn't even see it in front of us. Was with this, like there's like a chop in the water and it's tough to see stuff. All right, it's been about five minutes since we hit the tree. I'm gonna check our bilge again, just make sure that it's still dry. There was a little bit of water in there, but that's normal. So I'm just gonna make sure that the water level is still the same. Tough to tell, but it doesn't seem like water is rushing in, so. I think we're okay. Oh, what are we like 12 hours into this now? 10 hours into it? So we've been sailing for about 10 hours now and it's about noon. We're going pretty good. We've been averaging a little over six knots. Brooke's gonna make us lunch now, I think. You look comfortable. I am comfortable. It's real nice. <laughs> and it's been about three hours since we hit the tree. And I don't know. Hopefully, so far, so good, I'd say. But we'll see when we get to where we're going what our bottom looks like. <laughs> Well, it's 2 p.m. and aside from the tree incident this morning, everything else on board has been great. Knock on wood, we've not had any problems so far and the sea state is absolutely beautiful. It's like maybe one foot seas and we have wind on our beam right now about 12 knots and we're doing about seven knots with our full headsail and main up. 
and we've not even had to adjust our sails at all. I really appreciate these sales. <sighs> Gary didn't sleep very well last night, so he's down there getting some rest. Hopefully he's getting some good sleep. And I'm just waiting to see a whale or a dolphin or for our fishing lines to go off. So peaceful out here right now. When life's just doing her thing, taking care of us. It's dinner time and it's not even eventful for me to film <laughs> because I already made the chili and the cornbread. So I literally just had to heat it up. And it's so calm that it's not even rolling off the counter. <laughs> p.m. and our wind is dying so we're gonna try to fly our spinnaker maybe for an hour two hours if we can before the sun sets we're not sure that we want to fly it at night since we're new to the spinnaker world but we figure we'll try flying it for an hour and see how we feel about it then Gary just started ringing it up and I'm gonna go help him So we just pulled in our head sheet, or our head sail, I mean. <laughs> We're gonna get everything fi fixed up and organized in our cockpit so that we don't have anything in our way while we try to fly this. Spinnaker flying. <laughs> this has made, this is like totally rejuvenated our love of sailing, I think. Gary's in love with the spinny. I'm in love with the spinny. <laughs> I mean, look, spinnaker sailing into the sunset. This is, this is paradise. <laughs> Till shit hits the fan. This is what sailing dreams are made of right here. I mean, look, look at this.
All right, so what all did we do? Well, we flew the spinnaker at sunset, but with it getting dark, we decided it wasn't best to have the spinnaker up in 15 knots of wind since we've only flown it three times now. So we decided to take it down and it's a little adventurous getting it down in heavier winds, but it wasn't too bad. So now we've got the Genoa back out and we're cruising along at about four knots. The wind of course dropped down. Now it's down to five knots of true wind. As soon as you take down the big sail, the wind drops. That's just kind of how sailing goes. But all good, we're settled in for the night. So we can get some rest now and take our time through the darkness and then we'll speed up in the morning and maybe put the spinnaker back up if the winds are right. We wanted to drop it before it got too late into the night just so that we didn't have any problems say at 2 a.m. with just one of us on a night watch. It is just after 10 p.m. and I just finished my watch so Brooke woke up and relieved me and now I'm gonna try to get some sleep. I'll be back on at 2 a.m. so it's uh, important to get as much rest as we can when we're off. The sailing is really nice right now. We've got like 10 to 12 knots on the beam, so we're zipping along. We're actually fighting a couple knots of current now, so it's slowing us down a bit, but hopefully we'll still arrive tomorrow before sundown. So we can only keep sailing and see what happens when we get there. But I will see you guys in the morning. Good night. It's 3 a.m. and we're sailing again. Brooke had to fire up the motor when she was on watch because the wind completely died out. But the wind has filled back in from the northeast and we are now pointed towards our destination in Koiba National Park. So conditions are really great. We've got about 12 knots of true wind and we're making five knots into it. We're, we're still fighting a little bit of current. There's probably one to two knots of current against us, but we're making pretty good speed still. And the sea state is just totally flat, so we really couldn't ask for anything more. If you're wondering about our autopilot, it's still steering away. We picked up the new autopilot drive that we ordered, the hydraulic drive, when we were in the shelter bay but we need a new pin and I need to do some fiberglass work back where it needs to mount. So we didn't really feel like waiting around in Panama just to get the parts and get it fixed because we have a limited amount of time to get up to Mexico. So since the autopilot drive that's in there is still working and occasionally grinding away, we figured we would just keep going with it and let it grind itself into oblivion. And we actually do have a spare set of gears for it as well still. So if we needed to, we could swap out the gears in it and keep going. So, But in nice calm conditions like this, it seems to steer just fine. So we're just moving along into the moonlight. The moon is about to set. And in another three hours, I get to go to bed and Brick will be up. So, nice peaceful night. I'm just gonna sit here and look at the stars. We have our stay sail, our head sail, and our main sail out right now because it was really calm last night and we wanted to keep moving, so we decided to go full sail. So what we usually troll is what we call a daisy chain and it's basically just a few little rubber squids with weights inside of the heads to keep them down and they're separated about a foot each and then behind them we just put a lure with a 7 knot or an 8 knot hook and it kind of looks like 
one fish chasing a bunch of other fish. So they work really well. We've caught tuna, mahi, pretty much everything. Snapper. Sailfish. What was that? Sailfish. Sailfish. We've caught just about everything with this. Uh, you'll also notice we have a clip on our reel here. This is just a dog leash and we tie it to our rail and clip onto our reel. That way this cannot go overboard because we really don't want to lose these. We set them back depending on the conditions about maybe 50 to 100 feet and we put one a little bit further back than the other one just to stagger them a little bit. That's pretty much it. When we hook a fish, one of us comes back to the rod to start dealing with the fish and the other one usually tries to furl in the sails or turn downwind or turn upwind, whatever we need to do based on the conditions to slow us down. What do you want me to do? I think we're stopped now, yeah? Yeah, we're stopped. Yeah, we're doing zero knots. Good job. Oh, I see him now. Yeah, he's doing circles. He's taking out line again. Gotta get the gaff out. It's a nice one. We did it! <laughs> We just caught a really big mahi. The first mahi we've caught since we were headed to Columbia and probably the biggest mahi we've caught in like a year. And we're super excited to have fresh fish once we get anchored. I'm gonna go on the stern deck and try to fillet it. Yes, fresh mahi for dinner. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Catching one fish this size will provide many meals for us, and since the conditions were so nice, we were able to vacuum seal the fillets while underway. We're approaching the national park here. Cohiba's over here to our port, and right in front of us is the island we're gonna stop at, which is Isla Canal de Afuera. And with that, our sail to the Cueva Islands has come to an end. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us, and we look forward to sharing our next video with you as we see what damage the tree did to One Life's bottom and go for some amazing scuba dives. A big thanks to all of you for cheering us on out here, and a special thanks to our patrons for supporting these productions. If you'd also like to support these videos and follow along on our journey in real time, please be sure to check out our patron page. Cheers everyone, thanks for watching.